Okay, Jason Fauci, this might not help because this is big 12 gauge wire, actually 10 gauge wire. And you do, you're gonna have small stuff to solder, but maybe after I do this plug, I'll find something small. Anyway, I always use the metal soldering iron cleaner and put solder on the tip right before you put it to anything. Then touch it to the thing you're trying to tin and let the heat transfer. Now on this big 10 gauge wire, you're gonna to need to turn it over to be easier. Get the other side. And you just make sure all the wire is coated and trim some back if you need to. This is just what I do. I'm sure some people are gonna say it's wrong. But you wanted to video what I do, so hopefully this works for you. Now if you see I'm rolling it, transferring the heat. Now that's good and tin. Now I've got this little block. I've got my XT90 already in it. I've already got it tinned. I'm gonna get a bunch of solder because this is a big jobby. Oops. Okay, so I already screwed up. This is for the next piece. I'm making a series adapter. So I need to tin this series adapter. And I color coded it because on the center of a series adapter, you take one plug negative to negative, one plug positive to positive for your end result. And then you connect the two plugs. And to connect them, you will have a negative going to positive in the middle. So when I made these big wires, I just color coded them. But anyway, I need to tin these. Maybe I'll cut this part out. I've got my Hako 888 all the way up to 899 Fahrenheit because it's 10 gauge wire. When you're starting out, I don't ever want to recommend too hot soldering on boards because you can lift pads. But as Jubal the Wiz would say, we hotter is better so i do 7.99 all the time 8.99 for big stuff and i recommend when you're learning do 6.99 for all your small stuff only turn it up if you're doing lipo leads or something then when you get more comfortable you can crank it back up and the reason being you don't want to lift pads so you get more of a feel for what you're doing with the higher heat as you get more experienced but soldering is the easiest hardest thing ever because it's all about feel and I'm trying to rush this one it's not cooperating but it's good intended make sure you have no frayed wires all right now that I got that tinned We'll go back to here. So I color coded it. So we're going to start negative on this side, going right to the negative. Got it in there secured. Now I'm going to get extra solder and get in there and get it really seated in there. There you go. You can see it now. And it doesn't have a nice smooth puddle like I like yet. So I'm gonna add just a little more. This is gonna be a 12S adapter, so. There we go. Now we'll take this out and we'll go to the next piece, the other side of the adapter. This isn't really made for XT90s, so I just gotta fit them in where I can. So we'll come up here and we'll tin this. And get up in there real good. Just get a nice coat. And then you wanna get a coat on the bottom because these butt up in there too. those good and tinned. Now here we have 
positive coming out. So here we want negative coming out. So we'll start right up on top with the negative. With that first wire I tinned out of order. Get that heat in there so it's on the wire and on the XT60 post. There we go. Now it's all seated in there good. Let it get nice and settled in there. And then we'll come back and put the extra solder. This is a step that you probably wouldn't need with a regular plug. Usually would be enough solder the first time. I'm gonna go in with this one twice. Again. This $8.99 is hot. I still see a little gap in there. So I'm not trying to cut out any bloopers or mistakes. And I don't know if I'm right, but my philosophy on this kind of stuff is the more solder the better. All right. That ain't going nowhere. I shouldn't have pulled that out though. So now we got to connect the two. And then I'm out of the right size shrink wrap, so I'm just going to use hot glue. Okay, so now this is, it's a two color wire like I showed you. Normally they would have one color going back and forth, but it's going from negative to positive. That one went nice, first try. One I didn't rush. Can you see the, not very hard, easy to see. Anyway, so now I'll show you guys the connections. So we have our positive and negative going to the quad. Then we have positive to negative just like that from the quad where they should be. And then you connect the two poles in the middle. And then this doubles your voltage. So that's how you solder an XT90 series adapter. Now, I don't need to do this, but we'll go ahead and solder some small stuff. So this here is a Kamikaze 66 amp ESC. I'm gonna turn my soldering iron back down to my 799 same deal clean it off on your metal sponge get a little wet then you just touch it boom clean up your solder pad boom clean up your solder pad boom just want to make sure this is nice and clean Fresh, good surface. Now we'll go take off the other side. Get all this sticky stuff off. You wanna make sure that you're pulling away from the circuitry because you don't want to get a solder blob in the center of your ESC. So this one I got glue on. Is it gonna be easy to come off? Yep, okay. I'm gonna take a little fresh solder. Just make sure it's a good pad. You want shiny, you don't want dull. All right, so that's prepped again to wire to solder to. Let's see, we got some wires running. I guess we'll just solder right back on what we had. We'll start with the motor. 
same deal. I want to make sure that all my solder points are fresh on here. A little fresh solder. I like to just shake it off onto my table and then clean it off later. So you just touch it till it gets a nice flow. Some more solder. Touch it till it gets a nice flow. Touch it till it gets a nice flow. Then we'll go to the other side. What I like to do, normally it's not stuck like that. Well, I better make sure I know what's about. Positive is on the top. So it's normally not stuck down with tape. So what I would do is solder one wire to it so I can control it. Right on top of each other, hold it on the top wire till it melts through, pull back, call it a day. And then do the signal wires. So the signal wires, you, when you're hot like this, you have to be real careful. Just real, boom, quick signal. It had enough solder on it from the previous joint for that one, so I need a little more for this one. And then find the power wire. That one needs to be freshened up with some solder. See, it shouldn't take that long. There you go. I don't really know if that helps at all, because I don't really know how to teach soldering, but there's an example of some normal size stuff and some big stuff.